Are you thinking of getting a puppy? Well, you get a thumbs up from me because you are doing your research before that ball of fur comes home. And if you've already picked out a puppy and you're waiting for her to come home, this is gonna be a great video for you too. Do you know what else is gonna be a great video? Um, all of them. I have over a hundred videos on this channel and I produce new ones every week. So if you wanna be reminded when a new video comes out, you're gonna need to hit that subscribe button. Michelle here with How to Train a Dream Dog. Okay, buckle up because I've got a lot of great advice for you. I love talking to people preparing for a new puppy. I can give them some things to think about and help them prepare for what's to come. And they aren't so sleep deprived yet, so they can actually absorb all this great information. All right, the first thing I want you to do before getting a puppy is to determine if a puppy or even a dog is right for you. Puppies are a lot of work. I know they look cute online or at the breeder or the rescue, but please realize how much time you need to help them grow and be well-mannered companions. So getting a puppy is really like getting a part-time job, only you don't get to set your own hours and you get paid in kisses and accident cleanups. Do you have time for a part-time job? Puppies are not an afterthought that only need to be let out a few times a day. They need enrichment, engagement with humans, exercise, exposure to new things in a positive way, and training. Well, as well as potty breaks and feedings. Sometimes when people see the sample schedule inside my free new puppy starter kit, they say, Michelle, I have to do work and I don't have anyone who would come in and do all those things with my puppy. What should I do instead? <laughs> Sorry, um, but, but there isn't an instead. All of those things are critical in the early months of a dog. If you work full time, you're going to need some help during the day for the first year of your puppy's life. Some of my students are teachers and they specifically plan for a new puppy right as their school is taking a break for summer. They have several months of working with their puppy and then arrange for a sitter or a dog walker to fill in the gaps once they go back to school. I give those teachers an A plus for planning ahead. Now, if you want to check out that sample schedule, click the link below for that amazing free new puppy starter kit. It'll actually get you started with great information on potty training and a ton more. Now, it might take some creative thinking, but you can find a way to meet your dog's needs, even if you're working outside of the home. I do suggest you look for dog walkers or babysitters or friends or family that can help. You know what I don't suggest? Doggy daycares. Most doggy daycares don't accept dogs who are young and not neutered or spayed anyway. This is also not a great environment for the dog. Now I want to share more about this and I have a video on this topic here if you want to learn more. Now when someone tells me that they don't have a pet sitter or anyone they can trust, I ask them, what would you do if this was a human child? Where there's a will, there's a way. A puppy needs to be let out and fed and cared for throughout the day until they're mature enough to hold their bladder longer and can go for longer periods of time in between meals. After all, this is one reason why dog walking services have significantly increased over the last 10 years. People recognize a strong need to care for pups properly and leaving a puppy home all day to pee and poo all over is a recipe for disaster. So before you get that puppy, just think about how you will make sure their needs will be met with your work schedule. Next up, let's talk about the weather and how it relates to owning a puppy. You do realize that you will be taking your puppy outside possibly every hour when they first come home, right? So what's the weather gonna be like when you first bring your puppy home? Is it like this? Because this isn't so fun for most people. I keep a little spot shoveled for my dogs and they do just fine, but you can assume your new puppy might need a little time to adjust to the snow. So think carefully about the timing of when your pup comes home. Think about how it's going to feel when you're doing these hourly potty breaks outside. Now that my pups are older, we only have to go out about three to four times a day. Right Pickles? <laughs> It gets easier when they get older, especially if you put in the training time when they were young. Okay, you've thought about it and said, yep, I am ready. I want a dog. I can do this. Great, let's keep going. Now is the time to consider what kind of dog. Have you done some research on what breeds are going to fit nicely with your family? Well, you're going to want to know more than just the size of the dog and if they shed or not. All right, so take some time to look into what the breeds like to do and make sure it aligns with what you like to do. So here's a video 
that's going to help you with breed research. For example, if you're thinking about a corgi, well, I hope you have strong ankles because that little guy is going to be nipping at them. After all, corgis are a herding breed. Now, it won't last forever, and yes, you can work on this with training, but it's a natural behavior that you need to have a lot of patience with. They were born to nip at the back of giant cattle and sheep and horses that need to be moved out of the way. Oh, and you lab lovers, I hope you like water and buying chew toys. Labs are one of the most oral dogs and like to put everything, and I do mean everything, in their mouths. And if they see a puddle, you can expect squeals of delight because they want to romp in just about any body of water. I had a lab named Bear and his, we'll call him antics, were actually the reason I became a dog trainer. Now I go into more detail about that in my new ebook. Check out the link to that in the description below this video. Alright, I've oversimplified the deets there, but you get the point. Know your breed and the things they normally love. Next up, let's figure out where you're going to get that dog from. Please, take some time to research the rescue group or even the breeder. Picking a dog should not be an impulse decision when you're at the mall or the pet store or scrolling through Pinterest for cute puppy pictures. This is a 15 to 20 year commitment. When is the last time you picked a 15 year relationship in five minutes? In addition, sometimes the lineage of the dog is actually a better indicator of behavior than breed. So it will help if you know who the parents are and what their behavior traits are. Now a lot of my students love this video here. It's all about how to choose the right breeder and I have one on choosing a rescue as well. Next let's talk about money. Here are just a few examples of expenses you can expect. Grooming. <laughs> Depending on breed you'll likely need to groom that little guy every four to eight weeks. Now I have to tell you that Wesley, my standard poodle, he needs grooming every six weeks and the bill is well over $80. My much smaller Cavalier needs grooming every six weeks and his bill is still over $50. These are just average prices. I don't live in a big city where prices are even higher. And Harper, my Great Dane, well, she gets a spa day every couple times a year and it will cost me over $100. These prices also don't include tips to the groomer. Please tip your groomer. They bust their butt to make your dogs look amazing. Grooming is hard work. I know because I used to run a grooming salon. From time to time, I still groom my own dogs, but I'm busy and I did hurt my back lifting a dog a few years ago, so I actually prefer to have somebody else do it. You will also need to have money set aside for vet visits. Now the first year of your puppy's life is going to include things like free rounds of vaccinations, inevitable exams for upset stomachs or accidental ingestions, a spay or neuter surgery, heartworm meds, flea and tick treatment, and more. Don't forget to save money for supplies such as toys and food and gates and tools like leashes and collars. Oh, and of course, training. Did you think that was an optional expense? Let me ask you this. Now, if you were going to live in a foreign country, would you also consider enrolling in a class to learn the language? Of course you would. So. Consider paying for training so that you can better understand how your dog thinks and learns. Now, if you want to know more about different training options, including board and trains or class options or online options, you're going to want to see this video here. Spoiler alert, <laughs> these training experiences aren't all created equal. Now, I have been a trainer in each of these situations, so I can tell you which ones work best. In addition to those expenses, you're going to want to put away a few pesos for travel, either with a dog or for hiring a pet sitter. I got a video on that too. I told you, I have a lot of videos and if you haven't subscribed yet, you're going to miss out on a ton more. Okay, so you have evaluated your lifestyle, you have decided on a breed, you have researched the breeder or the rescue, you stashed away some money, and now let's get to bringing that little puppy home. This is the fun part. First. Take good notes from our teacher friend that I mentioned earlier who strategically planned her pup's arrival during her summer break. Prepare your schedule because you're going to need to take time off too. How much time? Well, I don't know. I mean, the best answer I can possibly give you is as much as possible. Many puppies are sleeping through the night by about the 15 week mark, so you might be getting more sleep by then. And you will also start getting into a pretty good routine by then, but only if you're keeping track of naps and potty breaks. All right. Next up on our before the puppy comes home list is find a vet and schedule an appointment. In the last six months, vet offices have been very booked up. 
and they're actually scheduling appointments out weeks and even months in advance. Some of them might actually not be taking new clients. So start now and find a vet that you'll like and that you can get that appointment scheduled with. Now, while you're talking to them, check for any new puppy care plans that they offer that can save you money. Oftentimes, they have a first year plan that includes vaccines and vet visits, even a discount on spay and neuter surgery. Side note, it actually just took me over three months to get in at a new vet. And the very day the appointment was scheduled for, they called to cancel due to the entire office being sick. My appointment got bumped another month out. I hope that doesn't happen to you, so just plan ahead for vet visits. Now, it's time to talk about that prep that you will need in your home. Yes, just like toddlers, Puppies need to be in an area that is cleared for safety. Puppies are almost worse than toddlers because they're low to the ground and they explore everything with their mouths. You're going to want to watch this video here to see all the creative ways my students have organized their homes with gates and flooring and a couple of other safety features as well. I definitely recommend you have a crate, which is usually best set up on the same floor as the potty door. And most people use a puppy pen if they don't have a smaller area that they can block off with gates. Now the pen keeps the puppy safe when you aren't able to supervise her, and it's used when the puppy is awake. Now it might take some trial and error to find the right spot for these two things, but you're gonna to wanna to figure it out before your new furry family member comes home because you do not wanna to offer too much space too soon. Now the pen or puppy proofed area is best as the only space for the puppy for the first few days or even a week when you can't supervise her. Be sure to look for cords, carpet corners, hanging blinds, baseboards, and outlets. Do not laugh at me, but I actually suggest crawling around on the floor and looking at all the things your puppy can get into. You'd actually be shocked at what you miss because you're looking at it from five or six feet up. Okay, what's next on my list? Something fun. Shop for puppy supplies, woohoo! <laughs> I know this is what most people think of when preparing for the puppy, but to be honest, it's not really the big part of the prep work. You really don't need a lot of supplies when that puppy first comes home. And you wanna save your money for when you start to see your puppy's personality, but there are a few things you should have. A chew toy, like a Benabone or a Nylabone, especially the ones that are softer for younger puppies. A Kong, or even a Westpaw Tapo, a snuggle puppy to help with the transition to your home, and the crate. Of course, dog food and treats and water bowls. Maybe even a small ball or a rope toy for when the pup starts to become a little more playful. A leash and a collar, or even a harness, and of course, again, that crate. Remember, you will have plenty of time to shop for more fun supplies as you get to know your puppy. Now, you won't need a bed for your puppy for a while because beds can actually be chewing hazards in the crate. I know, I am a party pooper, but believe me, you really want to be more safe than sorry on this one. All right, finally, it's time to start studying that foreign language. You know, canine body language. All right, in my online course, I actually have several lessons on body language. It's actually an extremely critical topic every owner should know about. It's also one of the most overlooked and misunderstood topics because so many people try to project what they think their puppy is feeling or thinking by observing the body language incorrectly. So for example, a wagging tail doesn't always mean a dog is happy. And a head down doesn't mean the dog knows he's guilty. Now, I could go on for days about canine body language and the interpretation, but you get the idea. Now is the time to understand what it means when ears go back or eyes go to the side or the head tilts or the tail tucks. It's not always what you think. Okay, hopefully I haven't scared you away from getting a dog with all this great advice. And hopefully you're nodding along saying, yep, I knew that or yep I'm ready for that so by now you're ready for gotcha day feels like you waited forever am I right well when it finally does arrive this video here all about surviving the first 24 hours will help you the most you might even need to watch it a few times to get all the great information now after watching these great videos I have faith that you will be ready spaghetti when your puppy comes home okay wait speaking of spaghetti I have one more tip read up on safety for your puppy Know what human foods are hazardous and which ones she might love. Now in the comments below, tell me, when are you bringing your new puppy home? Oh, and be sure to join my Facebook group, Puppy Training with Michelle Lennon, so that you can post adorable new puppy pictures. The link is in the description below this video. See you in the next video.